Hey, Matthew. How's it going, man? Uh, hello. How are you? Yeah, our first guest is struggling with audio, so I'm delighted that you're on standby to fill his boots. Oh, I know. Well, you, uh, you've got plenty to talk about. Uh, you know, there's lots going on with Madeleine McCann. There's lots going on with Philip Schofield and the Royals. And um... Madeleine McCann's never out the news. What is the latest? Well, um, the McCanns lost their case against the Portuguese government yesterday in the European Court of Human Rights. Um, I imagine their costs are going to be very, very substantial. And who will be paying for that? That is the question. That is the question that should everybody know. You know, there is there are about there are a few hundred thousand left in the fund of the uh, the McCann. Um, supporters, I can't remember what it's called now, but, um, you know, should they have to pay it themselves? What was the case about? Um, well, they tried to say that a detective called um, Goncalo Amaral had defamed them, but the the court yesterday decided finally that the um, the, 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 they were not defamed by the the actions of the detective, but they were put there because they were made suspects. And anybody who you can ask about this, you know, I spoke to a man today, a friend of mine, Sir Benjamin Slade, who always rings me up and asks me about any of these things um, to do with McCann, because he's got a great interest in it. Um, they were made suspects, so they're still suspects to this day. So... It wasn't the fault of the detective that they were a suspect. So suing him was a very bad idea. And at one point they did win 400,000, I think, euro in damages, but then he won against them the next time round. But they've got three months to appeal, so they might they might use more of the public money. But I think what's disgraceful is 14 million pounds of public money, of British public money, has been wasted on this investigation. The Operation Grange, if you look at their website to this very morning, as I did, it says the Operation Grange continues. What about all the other missing people? What about, you know, the the the, the, the poor mother of, of Ben Needham, the boy who went missing in Greece, who gets next to nothing in help? You know, my friend went missing and we kindly talked about it on your channel. They found him. You know, other people get thousands of people go missing and nobody gets 14 million other than McCann. And I find that very curious. Well, isn't it par for the course in a criminal investigation when a child goes missing that the parents are suspected? Just like in, you know, when, when women get murdered, often the partner is suspected? Yes, but equally, in this case, we should remember it should not be a British investigation. It should be a Portuguese investigation. The child went missing in Portugal. And then we've got the matter of... Um, I, sorry, my stupid computer is making noise here. Um, um, we've got the matter of also Christian Brockner, who is the German suspect, and he's not been charged. Tell, tell the viewers a little bit about Christian. So Mr. Brockner is a very evil man, without a doubt. He has been convicted of raping people, um, but most of his victims are older. Some of his victims are younger, but but the majority of victims are elderly women, well, middle-aged to elderly women, as opposed to three-year-old children. Um, and the German police have been pursuing this man and saying he's a suspect, but even they are coming towards the conclusion that they haven't got a reason to charge him yet. Um, and the gentleman we met at the crime conference, um, what, what is his name? You'll know his name. Um, the double barrel police. Um, Mark Williams Thomas. Mark Williams Thomas. He, he went to Portugal with a view to trying to make a program saying Christian Bruckner was the kind of person to do this. And he came to the conclusion that he couldn't find any evidence. So many people have been going down this avenue of Christian Bruckner. They've, they've examined buildings, they've examined vehicles, um, but they haven't found anything. 
it's yet another red herring in the case. Look, if you've got 14 million pounds of money sloshing around, all, and then on top of that, you've got all the private money that was put into this. People like Philip Green he offered a million, um, Richard Branson, the Sun newspaper. Somebody would have traded in the perpetrator. It looks it's like a oh, with a wonky eye. It's got a strange eye condition. This child is easily identifiable if it were still alive. And those Cadavar dogs sense death in the cupboard of that house. Now, whatever happened that night, whoever knows. We don't know. I don't, I, I don't make any theories about it because you can't make a theory about something when you weren't present. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the oracle. So I can't say what happened. But, you know, I have met Mr. and Mrs. McCann. Um, didn't particularly like them, but that doesn't mean that they're guilty. But equally, I do think they were appalling to leave their children unattended when they could have paid for childcare and they could have easily have done that. You know, they were doctors. And it's not as if they couldn't afford it. So, Matthew, I know you don't subscribe to subs conspiracy theories, but what do you think about this theory that the kid was given some kind of sedative and, and, and actually died and the body was was disposed of? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know, but I've, I've read many of those theories. I've equally come across many things on that level, um, which suggests, you know, that obviously there was the scent of death in the cupboard in the apartment. There was the scent of death in the, in the car, the cadaver dogs, you know, lots of things that don't make sense. And I, I, if you read my articles, I always put a few questions at the end and I say questions without answers. And I urge people to read those and they can make their own judgments. All right, so I'm going to ask the viewers then if they've got any questions for you. We've got one coming already. Ash has said, um, if you've got any fans or anything in the room to, to turn them turn them off, uh, Matthew, he's, he's getting a bit of feedback. Fans in the room, no. Okay, let me turn this down. All right, so have they faced charges for neglect? Um, no. And do you think they were neglectful? Under British law, they would have been, yes. On the British law. Left their children unattended. But many people I know would say, you know, well, we left, we leave our children, you know, they're not far away. But in this case, if you look at the map of where the house is, um, the apartment goes straight onto the street, public high street. Um, the place where they were, where they were having their tapas and their food was not visible okay they all went and checked periodically the tapas seven and they called the tapas seven this group the friends and the other parents left their children unattended as well so you know they weren't alone in doing this but it's um no it's a it's not the way that you'd expect normal people who could afford childcare to behave and especially to leave the door open Unlocked. So, not, one one question is coming for you, Matthew. What evidence yes. do you cite to absolve the McCanns of guilt? I don't absolve them of guilt. Well, that I, was answered. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say they're guilty or not guilty because because there's never been a never been a body found, so that's not for me to answer, is it? Really? Can you see that question on the screen? Um. No, I can see you on. I can. Uh, I can see half a question. But I'll, 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 oh, ah, right. Are we likely to ever get closure? Right. Um, I think highly unlikely. I think that this child, the body, must have been put somewhere very far away where it will never be found. You know, there were lots of building sites in that area. You know, the concrete could have gone over the next day. All sorts of things could have happened. Because with this level of money involved and this level of people involved, so, you know, the McCanns had parties in Downing Street. Peter Mandelson got involved. Um, you know, they went for vodka and risotto with Clement Freud 
you know, lots of very powerful people supported them. The, you know, the, the Branson and um, Philip Green and um, this double glazing tycoon from the north of England. Um, they they had big supporters. So if this were to be solved, it would have been solved already. It doesn't make sense that this goes on and on. And, you know, I came into contact with them through a lady called Lady Catherine Mayer, was, or Lady Mayer was her name. She was married to a man called Sir Christopher Mayer. He was British ambassador to Washington. He died a few weeks ago. Um, and she ran a charity to do with abducted children. And that's how I was introduced to them. And I immediately took a dislike to them. I found them very aggressive, particularly him. I found her a bit strange, um, but I didn't like his temper. He was a very rude man. And I thought that that was my only observation of him. I but that doesn't make him anything other than a very rude man. Let's see if there's still any feedback. Do you have a headset by any chance, Matthew? Do I have a headset? Um, yeah. I do have some um, speakers. Yeah, if I could go and... Do you want me to... Yeah, go, go and grab them, because there's still a little bit of feedback. And... We are going to be bringing in Mitchell early, I think, while we continue with Matthew. Let me just, because I can still hear the feedback on myself there. This should be better. Right, so now, Matthew, you've got to change your audio. Yes, there we go. Let's hear you, Matthew. Hello. <laughs> yep. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, yes. Oh, that's perfect. You have fixed the problem of the feedback. That's oh, great. Nice. I really appreciate that. All right. So the next question that's come in from the desolate one. What about the questions they refuse to answer? Um, Sean, could you ask if it's being posed to the McCanns again? Great show. Um, they haven't been posed to them again because they haven't been back to Portugal as far as I'm aware. Um, they left Portugal because they didn't want to answer the questions. Mark Wilson wants to know why they could not afford babysitters if they were wealthy doctors. Well, that's a question you'd have to ask them, but um, I find it very odd that they chose not to do that. Um, but but the whole group, the whole tap of seven, they all, they all had the same mentality, so... It was obviously a thing of that group of people that they didn't feel the need to pay for childcare, but they did pay for childcare during the day on occasions, which I find quite odd. So why would Next you question, pay at do night? You believe the do you believe the couple who went on holiday with the McCanns? Um, well, there was there were seven people, so I don't know which couple you mean. Did, they, did all of the seven people just give them the alibi of you know it was an accident? Um, kind of there thing? were many. There were many. Well, they didn't. They didn't say it was an accident. They didn't. They didn't know what happened. They all. They all had different stories, but the main one is a lady called Jane Tanner, and she's the one that most people like to ask about because she changed her story a number of times. Jenny wants to know why did she, the twi sorry. Why did why did the twins not get taken? Just Madeline. Um, I have utterly no idea. I couldn't answer that, but it seems very odd, doesn't it? Yes. Karen wants to know: Is it true there was childcare available on the site? Um, it was. It was a Mark Warner Resort, and um, yes, childcare was available there. Next question: Do you believe that she was abducted? That's from Truth. Um. I personally believe that the evidence points to something happening in the cupboard. In the cupboard? Could you expand on that? Um, the cadaver dogs sent death in the cupboard. And the cadaver dogs haven't been proven to lie in the past. So I do think there is an evidence. There is evidence that the poor child, something happened to it in that apartment. And the fact that there's never been a body found or a child found, you know, there are these ridiculous sightings. Like people say, oh, they heard a child speaking German with a strange eye in a supermarket. 
but they never cite a source. Um, I do think that sadly poor Madeline died in that apartment by whatever means happened, but I don't know. I can't prove it. And, you know, the child could still be alive. It is entirely possible that the child was abducted and taken away. It's entirely possible that it died in that apartment. But I think the likelihood is the cat of our dogs are not lying. And that's yeah, what that... Mr. Amaral, um, you know, seems to think. And he, he continues to maintain what he says about it in his book. And I hope that his book is now published in Britain. Gary Denton has asked, will they be brought in to answer questions with the police again? Um, with the Portuguese police or the British police? Or let's, the German let's, let's, police? Let's, let's talk about both. Um, well, there's all three. Um, so I, the, 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 the British police cooperate with them through Operation Grange. Um, they support them, and that's funded by repeated um, uh, Home Secretaries, Theresa May being one of them in the past, um, you know, more recently Pretty Patel. Um, the Portuguese police are not particularly happy with them because they don't cooperate with them. Um, and the German police seem to have this thing about this Brockner, but they're not getting very far with it. So... I don't see any any likelihood of Mr. and Mrs. McCann being questioned about anything again in the near future. The desolate one has, has sent a question for me. Sean, do you feel that the McCanns are guilty of illegal reasons you are not allowed to say? So I don't know. I'm an observer of all the different theories. We've interviewed everybody from David I to Mark Williams, Thomas, and a range of views in between. We've tried to absorb as much information as possible on this case. So at the least, I think there was negligence in just leaving the kids in that room and going over and having that meal. I think that security protocol should have been tighter. They should have contracted some kind of adult uh, babysitter from the facility or there should have been you know, more supervision and adults watching what was going on. So I think at, at the very minimum, you know, um, and, and now if, if they're not guilty, to have that happen is the most heinous thing that could ever happen in a parent's life. So, you know, our hearts go out to them for the nightmare, you know, they, they must um, have dealt with. So next question for you, Matthew, is from Nick. Do you think that she could have been, I'm not going to say that word because the algorithm doesn't like it. We use the word transported. Mm. We use yes. the word transported. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think that's highly unlikely. I think, you know, if if this child had gone somewhere, then somebody would have interacted with the person that took that child. Um, you know, there's even one photograph of a woman who looks like a certain person we can't mention whose initials are G uh, M. <laughs> And the woman really does look like her. And, you know, um, somebody who came into interaction with somebody who did that would have traded them in because the rewards involved are into the millions of pounds. You know, when, when there's the rewards, someone's always going to snitch. You know this. You've been through the prison system. You know, you've, you've encountered people who, who've no doubt probably been, you know, they, they think that they're loyal to people until there's something put on the table which gets them out of their own situation. And, you know, I know people like that, as you know, and we've talked about it in the past. Somebody would have traded in somebody if that child were there, because that child has a very distinctive eye. You can't hide its eye. It can't, you know, you can, ch you can color its hair black or brown or red or whatever you want to do but you can't change its eye that child would have been found by now if it was still alive i do believe fred wants to know why weren't they charged with neglect by the portuguese um because they left portugal they said they were being pursued and the sun ran a headline to that effect 
Kat wants to know, why do you think the British government put so much money into this one case? Well, I think we've talked about this before. Um, it was a case that came about at a very key period. So every 10 or 15 years, there is a case. So the case before was Jamie Bulger, the poor child in Liverpool who was taken by those dreadful boys who beat him to death on a rail track. And, you know, that was a case that shocked the nation. And in key political periods, you have a case like this. And it's a good, it's a good thing for a government to use. So this was at the period of the end of Tony Blair's government in May 2007, um, before Gordon Brown came in. And this was a case that captured the mood of the nation. And I was in California at the time. I remember being there. And it came up on the news all the time there. And the other big case was the one of that awful man that killed his wife and drowned her in the bay and killed the unborn child. And it was the both of they were both at the same time. I remember it very, very well. And Tony Blair and Gordon Brown both was involved. And then of course later David Cameron came to be involved in this. Once you get key actors of, of state involved in a case you can't have these people accused of anything because um they would reflect badly on that so it's become a it's become one of those stories where every, there's so many powerful people involved that no one would dare come up with an alternative narrative i suppose now i cannot say what happened and I really don't know and I've met Mr and Mrs McCann and you know I, I, I if they are totally innocent other than you know of leaving the door open um they it's a terrible thing for them but equally if this is one giant cover-up and, and you're you you do have many people who believe in things like this whereas I less so believe in that um it's a terrible that's an equal terrible thing but something here doesn't make sense and what makes no sense at all and sir benjamin slade said it to me this afternoon when i was on the phone to him was um you know why 14 million for that one child why not 14 million for every child you know why does this one case get continual reallocation of metropolitan police money I think it's an outrage. Next question is from MacB. Has proof of life been shown before the alleged date of kidnapping? Um, well, there were plenty of photographs of the child with other members of the group, from the plane to the swimming pool. Yes, so I don't think you can say it. the child was in that resort, yes. Just want to give a huge shout out then to people watching the stream across all the platforms right now. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. We've got almost 2,000 people watching. So just want to shout out. Thank you for all your questions. They're flying in so fast. Some of them, we're losing them because there's so many of them, but we are trying to get through them. And um, yeah, please, you know, like well, well, and subscribe. What I, would, what, what I would say is, you know, when I wrote about this yesterday, I had I had about fifteen thousand people write to me from wow. Facebook. Facebook is the, the, the thing. The difference between this case and other cases is because I think the people who are interested are a little older. They're mostly on Facebook, and they there are so many groups on Facebook de dedicated to the Madeleine McCann case, and lots of expats. Because obviously, song. a lot of British people live in Portugal. The stoned alien wants to know what could make the British government do an investigation? Um, well, the British government have um, funded the Metropolitan Police Operation Grange into this, but um, that's what they do. Crazy Bunny wants to know why did Robert Murat fly out so quickly? Uh, well, I... I don't know that much about Mr. Marat, but Mr. Marat has been completely exonerated, and I don't think it's fair to talk about him. 
why after all these years are the McCanns still being brought up on the radio? They really tried to discredit the Portuguese police. What's going on? Um, they are very able at connecting with people of power. So they've had friends in every government since their child disappeared or whatever you would like to describe it as. Um, so they, they knew Blair, they knew Brown, they knew David Cameron, they knew Theresa May. Um, they have been very able at keeping their story alive. Now, you could say that's a, an amazing thing, but um, I just think it's disproportionate that they've been able to do that. Um, um, as regards the book, I don't like the book. I refused to buy the book. I went and looked at it in Waterstones in King's Road in London when it came out. And I just thought, what a strange book that she talked about when we went to visit the Pope and when we went to visit Obama and when we went on Philip G. Green's plane and when we were on a net jet. I thought, why don't you talk about your child a bit more? I didn't like it. And then, you know, then I subsequently met her and I found her a weak person and I found him aggressive. Next question. Can you ask why Dr. Mark Perlin wasn't allowed to break the blood markers down for free? He can prove it's Maddie's blood. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, next question. I I'm sorry, if I had... can't answer the question, I'm not going to... We've never had so many questions come in, Matthew. There's, we, this could go on for hours, but we're about to bring in our next guest. Do you want to stay with us for the next guest, Matthew? I will carry on, yes. 